While we wait for a question from the floor, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, we listened to a remarkable speech by the Foreign Minister of uh, the Kingdom of Denmark, where he emphasized the important role for all of you, the government of the Kingdom, the Faroe Islands, Greenland, uh, at the Arctic table. How do you see this going forward? Well, I think we are on, have been on the right path also together with Denmark on addressing this. Of course, the Faroe Islands and, uh, and Greenland want to be a direct stakeholder in all the Arctic issues. Mm -hmm. So we tried with some models and there are, of course, some conflicts in that. But I, our argument for this, uh, as I mentioned, the, this democratic sustainability is, of course, the Arctic cooperation will be strengthened mm -hmm. with more partners that can take responsibility and push this forward in a democratic way. So, so we basically want our own voice and our own decision making at the table. Um, and how we can deal with that also in the construction of the Danish Kingdom is an ongoing process. But I think the dialogue is very good. There are conflicts of course, uh, but I think we will solve them. Because the main issue <coughs> is that we take responsibility and not, not see ourselves as some receivers of help or subordinate, but we will take active part in this international uh, cooperation, uh, and that can only be, in our opinion, for the, for the good of all partners. Well, let's have the lights up and see if there are questions from the hall. But one of the things we realized when we were launching the Arctic Circle is the fact that if one defines the Kingdom of Denmark uh, as a federal structure, I know it's not the official classification, but if you look at Denmark and then Greenland and Faroe Islands, to some extent it is. Over 90% of the landmass in the Arctic is under federalist structures in one way or another. They are called states in the Union in the US, they are called promises uh, in Canada. And we have always emphasized <coughs> giving a, a platform to these uh, regional governments, whether it's the government of Alaska, or government of Maine, Quebec, Canada, and of course, as we see here, both the Faroe Islands uh, and Greenland. And it's often a neglected aspect of uh, the Arctic political structures that uh, all the major countries, US, Canada, Russia, Kingdom of Denmark, have established some different ways of dealing with, with these regions. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, as we have moved forward uh, and we look at the track record of these 10 years, it's quite extraordinary how these different regions have played uh, a role. For example, when Canada, the then government of Canada was not particularly interested in the Arctic, the uh, Premier of Quebec uh, approached us and came to the assembly and, is, and he invited us actually to hold a forum uh, in Quebec. Anyhow, I know Icelanders can always ask a question about the Faroe Islands. <coughs> we get that with our mother bill. But if there are other people not from Iceland in the audience who want to ask a question, please raise your hand. Of course, my fellow countrymen can ask a question as well. But Okay, do we have, yes, yes, Fertram. Yeah. Hello, Fertram here, Keris is. Uh, my apologies for uh, zooming in on a very uh, local matter from the macro matters you've been discussing in your discussion line. But there is a big discussion in Iceland about uh, currently, as we speak, about the negative uh, impact of fish farming on sustainability and the environment. <coughs> and I wanted to ask uh, uh, in Faroe Islands, has the, is that a concern in Faroe Islands, that there is going to be pollution and negativity and non-sustainability around fish farming? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Indeed, that is perhaps the, the most important issue with all fish farming and has been so for many years in the Faroe Islands. And again, as we, we are, Iceland and the Faroe Islands are, are, are used to go to go into crisis, so our fish farming industry went to some massive crisis because there was not a regime that could secure the sustainability of the fish farming, uh, actually through two, two crises. Uh, after the second crisis, we made a system now that we believe is perhaps the most advanced uh, system to regulate the negative impacts on the environment from fish farming. But of course, 
still fish farming, also in our fjords, is, uh, is a monoculture, uh, which of course affects the, <coughs> the total, total um, ecological system. And we are now trying to emphasize more on that, on research, to, to, to monitor the effects on, on the whole ecosystem of uh, fish farming and have not all the knowledge yet. Uh, um, and thirdly, we are trying to get the fish farming out from the fjords, out to the open sea, as they also experiment with and, and, are, and are doing in Norway and, and Chile and so on. So that will be the, the most important thing to, already we have, we have pushed near the open ocean. If it's possible to, to have fish farming in the open ocean, you will not have the same uh, environmental issues as you have when you are in a, in a fjord. Uh, it is a very important lesson for us in Iceland. I remember when I visited the Faroe Islands more than 10 years ago, the CEO of, uh, of Bakkafrost, the leading Faroese fish farm, salmon farming <coughs> company, said, you in Iceland have to learn a lot from us. Uh, and I think it's still true. So thank you for raising the question. Uh, okay, the floor is open. We have a few minutes left. No, okay. So, what is the primary political debate in the Faroe Islands about? At the moment, yeah. it's basically it's foreign policy at the moment, combined with all the other issues that every country here is dealing with. It's uh, the question of uh, uh, of uh, human rights, it's uh, housing, it's uh, dealing with the consequences of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the environment and so on. Uh, but basically now it's the foreign policy, of course, the situation in the world. And that is new. We have for many years been spectators. Uh, we have learned from Iceland, of course. Uh, but now we are taking a much more active part in all foreign policy. So that's one of the big debates. And then, of course, the green transition, how we can get to our goal, goal, goal for being 100% green on land in 2030 mm -hmm. and dealing with the big issue how to make a, a sustainable or a, or a green uh, fuel solution for a fishing fleet, mm -hmm. which is the biggest uh, part of our industry that, that makes emissions. So. Well, somebody told me about 10 years ago that before the end of this decade you would be 100% clean energy. Well, that, that's, that's a goal on land. Yeah. Uh, but, but still, we haven't cracked the code yet mm. for, for building fishing vessels that are 100% mm. uh, renewable energy. Mm. That's, that's one of the big issues, both for fishing and, of course, for transport at sea. Mm. Uh, but there are many good projects, and we have also have some presentators here uh, at the Arctic Circle to present uh, cooperation on that issue between ferrous companies, Icelandic companies, and so on. So, so that's ongoing. Well, while I thank you for coming here and making this presentation, I, I thought I knew a lot about the Faroe Islands politics, but you surprised me when you tell me that the biggest political debate is about foreign policy. At the moment, yeah. At the moment, yes. Okay. And still, of course, the independence no, 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 issue is always different. ongoing. Now I'm looking to my good friend Lars, <laughs> which I believe would have, would have been a uh, uh, member of my party if it was in the, in the Faroe Islands. Okay. <laughs> no, that's at the, for a different platform. <laughs> that's another dish. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you so much. And, well.